about how it all came together where did you start where did you go where did you start collecting your information your videos and so forth how did you go about it okay yeah um i the initial idea was to look at the source of uh, the the arab spring and i looked at muhammad Bouazizi, the, the guy who uh, uh burnt himself in in december 2010 and caused the whole arab spring and i decided why not start with a street vendor just like Bouazizi. And so that's what I did. I started with a street vendor. Mm-hmm. And I initially, I, I thought he was going to be a lot... Uh, he seemed like he was going to really open up and talk about um, his, not just the situation he lives in and his frustration with that situation, but also the relationship between the situation that he's in, uh, the, the poverty he's in, and the the Moroccan system, the Muslim. What was your choice? How did you pick the street vendor? Did you uh, was it randomly, or did somebody recommend that you talk to that guy in in your documentary in your film? Or again, was it random, or was it somebody? That no, it, it it was not random. Um, uh, a man that uh, works for for my family uh, introduced me to him. And uh, th- that's how I, I got in contact with him. And he, he had told me that, because it's his neighbor, and so he told me that he would be very open, that he would want to talk a lot, but when it actually came to the actual interview, he didn't really want to talk that much. Well, when you said a man that works for your family, obviously uh, you come from a, a well-to-do family, is my yeah, understanding. Yeah. Right. And why would you be interested in in a documentary about uh, the Arab Spring, if your family is well-to-do, according to uh, some, statist- some statistics that mm-hmm. were done and, and also some polls that were done with the well-to-do Moroccans, that the majority of them really wanna, want, to, uh, want to keep the status quo as it is, and an Arab uprising would be detrimental to well-to-do families in Morocco. Why would you want to do th- something like that because my my family although it's well to do right now like i like as i t- talk about it in the movie my my dad actually had to work his way up from from nothing i mean he he used to tell me about uh, living in conditions where he was eating bread and water for dinner and he worked mm-hmm. in the tanneries in in uh, sale and uh he, he struggled with his life to get where he was and uh, my mom's side is is actually both sides that uh, all my relatives are actually still uh, not that well off. A couple of them are, but most of them are not that well off. So I, I um, yes, I'm from a wealthy family, but uh, only my nuclear family. My my relatives are poor, and I, I saw that in my in my youth. I, I grew up. My mom loved to travel. I, I mean, I, I traveled through all of Morocco. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I, 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 I mean, I been all the way down to to Dakhla and I've seen everything and uh, everything is you know I, I I got a lot of experience growing up seeing things like that and um, that's where it comes from I think. Now uh, this is Saeed on Wall Streams Radio. If you've just joined us, we've been speaking with tonight's guest filmmaker uh, Nadir Bouhmouch. Uh, Nadir comes from Morocco and we're discussing his. Uh, his uh, new film, My Makhzen and Me, uh, that was made in Morocco, and on also uh, he put the film together uh, for us, and it was made public on February 19th. And, and Nadir, did you did you seek counsel before you start doing the film? Did you ask some questions? Well, how do I go about this, and what would be the ramifications, if you want, or the crackdown? Uh, the consequences of doing a film like this, what would it be? Did you ask any questions? Uh, yeah, of, of course. I mean, when I when I shot the film and finished shooting it when I was leaving Morocco, um, mm-hmm. I was I was already worried I was, I was going to be caught with these tapes. And 
I realized I had something big in my hands, something that was needed to be told. And I eventually convinced myself that um, if I didn't do it, if I didn't take part of it, then I'm just, you know, um, I, I would have failed. This is my only chance. To, to to really get that story told and the movement could die at any point i mean not to be negative but that's the, that's the reality it could um just peter out and and then you won't hear about it it'll be the the Mahzenist narrative historic narrative will just completely eliminate it and i wanted the story to survive i wanted to enable future generations of moroccans to see that uh, the street uh, using the street as a political medium is still an option. It's always an option. And that was the thought process. And when it came to releasing it, I uh, it, it took it took a lot of uh, soul searching and, and thinking whether I should, how it would affect me, how it would affect my family. And I, uh, I decided that I had enough of a backing, that I was confident enough to uh, be able to release it and not suffer too grave consequences. Well, I, I didn't really think that you showed anything that would be construed as you sh uh, as, as really kind of detrimental to whatever they could uh, anybody else could refer to it. Because uh, one of my remarks is that you didn't show any pictures of the king, for example, giving us why did you have to make some choices, for example, as to how. The other side, how the Mechzen, the this powerful entity, actually has been able to water down any, to preempt any possibility of an uprising in Morocco, even though maybe Morocco, based on all the characters that you discussed, that Morocco was a prime candidate for, uh, for an Arab Spring. Is that because you wanted to make sure that you're not going to be to get in, into any kind of trouble politically? I mean, I, I did use um, clips from Al Jazeera that had the, the king on them, but I never showed. I never. You never really heard him um, giving a speech. I mean, there, there was a part where it was translated, but uh, the, the, there was definitely some presence from the king. And uh, the way I did it was that I wanted to portray everything that. I, I saw and I showed what was on TV. Maybe I didn't show it myself. I don't have access to it, but I did show what I could show. Is okay. That... Well, the fact already, Nadir, that we're talking about uh, you getting in trouble is actually, uh, if if it says anything to me, it talks about freedom of speech in Morocco and how much that is lacking and how much that people were being retaliated against as a result of voicing their opinion. How much yes. has Morocco really come along um, in comparison to the years of Lad and the Hassan and the, the King Hassan II? How much has changed in Morocco based on, based on what you documented? Um, I think, I mean, definitely a lot of things have changed. I, I, I never personally, uh, I mean, I've, I've grown up in uh, like after the years of lead, so I personally never experienced it to really give you a personal experience. But uh, I think it's come a long way from what I've read and seen and heard. Um, I think that the situation is better, that the fact that I, I'm not too afraid to release this film, that afraid to release this film is already a good sign. And uh, But the, the fact of the matter is I still have that fear. I st I'm still afraid. The film was difficult to shoot. I couldn't use my camera wherever I wanted, and that um, that shows you the that there is still a lack of uh, freedom in Morocco, a, a, a huge lack. I mean, it's not just there's this whole idea of Moroccan exception that we're, we're a lot better, that we're already at a, a we're better than Syria, we're better than Libya. Why would we want change? But it, you don't stop. Uh, you don't stop right now. You have to keep changing things until they get better, until they really are good. Do you, do you think that when people use the word Morocco as a model, that maybe it's a misleading quote that Morocco is probably not a model? Is that what you think? It's definitely not a model. I, I don't know why Hillary Clinton said that or why people claim that Morocco, Morocco is an exception because it, it's not. Because the fact is, it's it's still the same. Uh, it's almost the same as the other the other Arab dictatorships. Uh, yes, it's a monarchy. Yes, the king has a lot of backing, but um, the reason the king has a lot of backing is because um, 
a lot of a lot I'm going to say a lot of um critique of the of the government is delegated literally delegated to the parliament the parliament absorbs all the critique all the frustrations of the Moroccan people and so you don't see any any direct uh critique of anything that the, the actual source of the problem and that's why it's uh, it's an exception because people see these critiques of the government, but they don't see critiques anywhere else. Did that was that a factor that made you realize that using a street vendor uh, actually that fear has made you decide that maybe you need that you cannot really achieve what you wanted to achieve with your film, and you better go on to the streets and actually talk to some real people out there. How much of uh, your encounter with the street vendor and his fears has actually uh, made you decide that maybe you need to change the way that you're filming, you're making your film. Well, as soon as he refused to answer my question on the February 20th movement when he thought about them, I, mm-hmm. I immediately I, I knew that this film, the originally planned film, was over, and that I had to look for something better. That was when the decision to uh, em- employ a, a more uh, so reflexive style of cinema, where I'm actually looking at the at, the, at myself and what I'm doing, um, came out of that moment where uh, I was going to actually tell the audience uh, that this guy didn't want to talk, and there's a reason behind that. And then I was going to go and actually tell them uh, what the reasons were, and that's what I did. And the reasons are obviously something that every Moroccan has, which is that collective fear that has been ingrained in, in Moroccans. And I think you did a brilliant job showing it through the eyes of the uh, the, the, the street vendor uh, smoking, puffing away uh, with his uh, look, uh, kind of absent, but at the same time extremely 